to session? Or at set, what time is it? It's 7.34 a.m. May 14, 2024. Um, Amanda, would you please call the roll? Mayor Slanka? Here. Mr. Richmond? Ms. Cash? Ms. Sitsi? Here. Ms. Miller? Here. Ms. Lawley? Here. Mr. Bonnell? Dr. Zolly? Here. Thank you very much. Uh, next on our agenda is citizen comments. Are there any comments, or would anyone like to say anything? Um, Amanda, you want to, uh, Amanda, Olivia, that's why I want you to introduce yourself. Olivia, introduce yourself for those that may not know you. So Olivia has been with us. How long, Olivia? Probably um, about. It'll be, be two years. It'll be two years this year in October, wow. so about a year and a half. Yeah, with the workforce development grant, we had hired her to help us with, along with the emergency preparedness and, and plans, and she's done a great job. And she always is here, helping us to do anything during her school breaks and summer and etc. So she's been around for a while. She's an oldie now. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks, Olivia. Good to have you at the meeting. Okay, um, with that, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from April 2024. I have a motion to approve the minutes. So moved, I guess. <laughs> Thank you. Is there a second? Second. It has been properly moved and seconded. Um, Amanda, would you please call the roll? Mayor Slanka? Yes. Mr. Rich, I'm oh, sorry. Ms. Sipsy? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Ms. Lawley? Yes. Dr. Zollick? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Did we excuse the absent board oh, members? Oh, we did not. Oh, gracious. Well, okay, let's finish that one. The yeses have it, and the motion passes. The amendments are approved. And uh, now, as the health commissioner has stated, um, do we have a motion to excuse our absent board members, please? So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Wonderful. And Mr. John, would you please call the roll? Mayor Slanka? Yes. Ms. Sipsy? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Ms. Lawley? Yes. Dr. Zollick? Yes. All right, thank you. The yeses have it and the motion passes. Next item on the agenda is to receive and file our financial report for April of 2024. And uh, we are still one month behind, I do believe, Amanda, with our, did you check it? All of March is in, none of it is in. So okay, one month. yes. With our, they are thinking that they should be caught up again next you said month. The last month. I know, <laughs> I know. No month before that. I know. Stop it. So I know, and so I have placed in here somewhere in the packet where um, she, yeah, she had said. I know my packet's a little different because I've been going through it, but um, where finance, I put in the packet where finance had mentioned that um, that. Yeah, that they were posting it and that it should be up to date in the system, so it's in there. So just in case we ever need to look at that. But other than that, we are getting to that point. So next month. <laughs> I'm optimistic. Okay, so that concludes our yes. financial report. Yes. All right. Next item on the agenda is our education presentation. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Forgive me. Um, so we have a motion to approve. Okay, thank you. To receive and file our March financial report. Is there a motion, please? Is our April? Is okay. it April? Because we don't have the April one. Oh, yeah, so it is. It's still April for us, but they only have the numbers in for March. But it's we're receiving so we our... Ew. Okay. Yeah. So, so what, how does that work, then? Next month, we're hoping that they have April and May in. Well, maybe receive and file financial report for the month of... March. Yeah, because but it's what we're March presenting to yeah. board for April. To current? Nope. We've never had this issue. So yeah. Um, because we don't have the April numbers yet. Mm -hmm. So we don't really have But them. last month we received and filed March's financial yeah. report because that's what we're presenting in March. So then you can't do anything. You don't have them. As presented, how's that? Uh, we They're receive and file it's financial report. Next month. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously, you can't do it. You but we do it. have we do have March. All we do March have all of March. But I thought we said you just said that we approved those last month. 
Kim, do we have a caveat, like the completed March financial report? But this would be yeah. the completed March. Because that was April last, and now we're in May, so for April. So you already did March. Yeah. What yeah. about, we don't have anything. <laughs> I love this discussion. What yeah. about, no, but I mean, you're right. Right, right. But what if we receive and file the financial report as presented? And so it's what we have here before us. I, I but you didn't that present because that is what is in the document the, here, the, the, the yeah. paperwork. Mm -hmm. So I, I would feel comfortable doing that, but not I would too. on mm -hmm. stuff that we don't have in front of us. Right. So that's in the packet. So we, we Which received. Which says April 2024. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As, as received. Presented. As, as presented, as, as received. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, so then mm -hmm. the new motion is, may I have a motion to receive and file the financial report as presented? Mm -hmm. So moved. Is there a second? Thank you. Uh, has been properly moved and seconded. And Ms. Brown, please call the roll. Mayor Slanka? Yes. Ms. Sipsey? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Ms. Lawley? Yes. Dr. Zollick? Yes. Yes, this have it. The motion, motion passes. Thank you. Okay, but now the next item on the agenda is our education presentation, the health benefits of exercise by Dr. Genowine. So May is physical activity month. So I tried to be a little more uh, upbeat than my usual kind of uh, <laughs> disease process thing. So although this kind of gets depressing at times. So physical activity, what is, you know, what, what is considered physical activity? 150 minutes of moderate exercise weekly. Pretty much suggested to be 30 minutes, five days a week. And the way you know it's moderate intensity, what they describe as the talk test means while you're doing this level of activity, you can still have a conversation. Um, you can still have enough breath that you're talking normally and doing things. So obviously some examples up there, kind of more typical things that most of us would do um, in getting some moderate uh, intensity exercise. If you're doing more vigorous exercise, then it's half the amount of time um, or, or any combination thereof. So if you do 30 minutes of vigorous exercise, then that would reduce 60 minutes of your moderate intensity some, ver some version of those two things together. With vigorous exercise, you're gonna be able to just do a few words. So you're gonna be breathing kind of hard, huffing and puffing a little bit. You won't be able to really have a full on conversation, but just kind of getting out a few words. So when you're jogging or running or you know something that's really uh, more exerting and using more respiratory effort. Um, that's for adults. Children, it's a little bit more intense. They recommend 60 minutes of moderate to vigor vigorous activity daily. And then there's strength training. Weightlifting, even using your own body's weight or resistance or uh, a lot of the seniors wind up with some sort of physical therapy and they have the resistance bands from their physical therapists. Amazing how they hold on to those and yet never use them very much. So with strength training, it's recommended two times a week. That can replace, um, in the five days a week, they can replace two of those five days if, if they're doing strength training in addition. In the United States, this is kind of the interesting point, almost 25% of, of adults get no exercise at all in a week. Um, about 50% get the recommended amount, and therefore about another 25% get some amount, but not, not enough. Less than 25% of adolescents, kids and adolescents, meet the recommendations of the si an hour every day. And those numbers have been declining for about the past 10 years. The benefits of physical activity, it's actually shown through some uh, research, 13% decrease in mortality. The vast majority of that decrease is in cardiovascular events. So a reduction of uh, myocardial heart, heart attack um, because of the reduction in blood pressure, reduction in cholesterol, reduction in blood sugar, um, several things that, that correlate with physical activity that reduce the risk of heart attack. 15% in quality of in improvement in quality of life. This isn't quality of life in like, I feel better and my life is better. This is in other diseases besides mortality, besides death. So uh, decreases in cancer, decreases in lung disease, decreases in other diseases that would affect the arthritis. Diseases that aren't necessarily um, lethal, but definitely affect someone's quality of life. So you get a 15% improvement in that quality of life. And they estimate 3.2 million deaths are associated with not getting enough physical activity, just in the United States. So breaking it down a little bit more, the benefits that come along in kids with meeting those um, guidelines, 
is they clearly have an improvement in academic performance. They do better at school. They're less uh, fidgety, less um, energetic, and therefore, uh, and, their, and their brain function is much clearer, so they, they perform better academically. Cardiometabolic health, again, reduce sugar, um, improve weight, uh, which fits into that as well. Um, reduces the risk of chronic illness like diabetes, hypertension. Um, their mental health is a big one that's just re repeatedly throughout the literature. Improvement in anxiety and depression, and it comes quite quickly. Um, you don't need to be doing this for weeks and months to get improvement in mental health. Musculoskeletal improvement, you get improvement in um, muscle mass, which again improves in metabolism and sugar management, but also in bone strength and reducing bone fractures. And then even in kids, as we're seeing more and more kids struggle with hypertension, you get a reduction in blood pressure. So adults, they break it down into immediate and long term. Immediate, sleep is another big one. Almost immediately the first day you get out, you know, the two things we all kind of complain about is, or a lot of patients complain about is, I have no energy and I can't sleep. Um, and, and again, you look at the number of people who are not doing any exercise or not nearly enough. Those are two biggies for a very quick response to getting adequate exercise and improving sleep, improving energy, and just like kids improving their mental health, improving anxiety and depression, um, and, and it improves blood pressure quite quickly. Long-term effects, cognitive function. There's studies showing reduction in dementia, even Alzheimer's type dementia, but also just mental clarity in general. Again, mental health improves as time goes on. Your anxiety and depression can improve. Heart disease, as we talked about, is a biggie with, with the multifaceted improvement in risk factors. Improving weight, balance and coordination. So you got better strength in your legs and your core, um, and, and you improve balance and coordination. Risk of cancer. Eight different types of cancer that have been shown to be reduced uh, with uh, routine and enough routine physical activity. And again, bone strength. 65 and over, um, for the more senior populations, they have the same immediate results and they have the same long-term results, except they also have um, shown to be remain independent in living for uh, quite a noticeable amount of time beyond that. Part of that is because of the improvement in muscle and bone strength, reduce falls from the balance, they have less fractures, and uh, the cognitive function, so they can remain independent for quite a number of years longer. And then the social interactions that come with it. By the time you're a senior, you're oftentimes either walking with someone else or going to a facility, even the senior center, and having a lot more social interaction and kind of the isolation that can come with being a more senior uh, population. Would you say that seniors recover quicker from injury when they have been active? I did not see any data on that. Okay. Um, I think certainly having a better muscle mass, better uh, tendon flexibility mm -hmm. will, will reduce the odds of an injury. Yeah. But I don't know that I can say that they recover quicker. Okay. I think they recover quicker. I've had clients that have been out with shoulder surgeries and she's back 30 days later she's worked out all the way up until I think she's in her 70s. Yeah. And with knees, they're just stronger going into the rehab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're able to recover quicker. Mm -hmm. More quickly. Mm -hmm. And with um, such data about children doing better at school, how, how often do our kids have gym in Middletown? Do we know? I don't even think they have to go to gym anymore. <laughs> Not at all? Yeah, and twice would. It's for one semester like each year, it's one semester for like an hour a day. Right, we used to have it, I think when I was a kid, I think they had it every day. Mm -hmm. And um, of course recess as well. And so with those kinds of results, is that a conversation that's happening in the state? Like making sure, they it's typically getting, getting so less. Much. Yeah, it's getting less. Because, mm -hmm. because the academic Twice requirements are increasing. Mm -hmm. oh. So we're starting to pare down the specials like they kind of referred to. Um, the, the, the information I had was mostly from either the CDC or the, I'm forgetting now, the, car, the Biomedical Center Journal of Public Health. And they pointed out that 25% of school age children get no physical uh, mm -hmm. education at all. Oh, that's so the school system does not have any gym class for 25% of kids in the United States. Well, that's kind of a travesty, really, mm -hmm. because not most kids yeah. can't play organized sports. Because mm -hmm. you definitely get exercise when you're playing organized sports. But um, 
So it seems just as important, at, at least with the data from the right. results. It's something that sounds like we need to be talking about. It seems like you could, especially the younger kids, I always said you should be able no, to they teach. they can't even get them to write. They can't, they can't write <laughs> cursive. You don't do uh, physical exercise. Absolutely. I mean, seriously. <laughs> well, but you know what, well, well, I remember being at the and center. Have some of the priorities wrong in the schools. I remember being the at the test. center, and I had two disruptive little, I was doing a presentation with this group of kids, two disruptive little boys. <coughs> and I remember making them, I said, let's all stand up. And we start, you know, walking in place. And then when we got ready to sit down, I, I said, and you two can walk a little longer. <laughs> and I pooped them out. And they kind of calmed down. You know, you kind of poop them out. Because yeah. I said, you can run, and let's see how, how long you guys can, who can outrun, you know, they're running in place or whatever. But I think you should, I mean, you could probably be creative with younger ones mm -hmm. in teaching even. Like if you stand up, didn't they have that one time? The classes with the younger students where you stand up and you kind of have to move or whatever, interaction type things, because they can kind of calm down, work off some of that energy or whatever. So, yeah, but it seems like it should be a way that we can incorporate all of it, maybe getting together. Everything's changed. Walking to school, remember, we used mm -hmm. to walk. Whew, we used to walk. Five, not, <laughs> not as long as you did. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I remember. Yeah, I, watch I, I, I know. I, if, for you guys that remember, uh, I was on 15th and I walked to Vail, which was over there on Gerard. Mm -hmm. So we, I mean, I was on 15th and I crossed over and we, I mean, walked to school. I'll tell you that this, was I, went, I went to Miami and when I went to Miami, they had no transportation. You didn't walk to Oxford. I didn't walk to Oxford. You had to walk around <laughs> Oxford. Let oh, me tell you. Oh, I know. In the, oh, morning, I bet. In the winter and everything, there was no transportation. I bet. Yeah. There was a lot of walking in that. Remember in campuses? Those days. Yeah. yeah. And that's actually something to be said. Um, when I lived overseas, when I lived in Philadelphia, mm -hmm. public transportation was so that was vital. That's why I had to have a car. Um, definitely much healthier just from walking, like you said at Oxford, just from walking. Yeah. That that kept that keeps people healthy. One of the advantages. Mm -hmm. um, but also, the 3.2 million deaths a year in just the U.S. A year, correct? Yes. Associated mm -hmm. with Black Lives Matter. Now that, it sounds like another pandemic. It just, it, that's a lot. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's only going to increase if we've got kids that are living. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, it is. Well, look at obesity. What's the yeah. numbers on obesity? Obesity. Yeah. And diabetes, and hypertension, and all the things that come with that. More and pandemics. Again, just more yeah. heart disease. And yeah. So I guess the conversation would be, you know, what what can the health department do? Well, this this I have a, re a report on when it's time for my report. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're that's going to go right along with this in our community health improvement plan mm -hmm. from out of our trough. Well, the our point is partners. they understand that the people in power that run, you know, mm -hmm. understand these things, and what have they done for it? Nothing. So, I mean, why would you expect them to do That's why you have now? to do it yourself. And what can we do? That's why we have to do it. We have to empower ourselves. Well, I'm sure. I, my kid, you know, I'm past that. But, I mean, kids sit in the house, and they play on the computer, and they mm -hmm. play on their phones. And, you know, in our day, <laughs> they had three channels, and you went outside, you know. And yeah. so it was different. Right. right. Really I think was. that's when your mind, you have to become in intentional. Right, we have to become intentional what we do because of remote controls, microwaves, everything that has gotten us from not being very active. We have to be intentional to to be active. But um, but I also wonder, can the can we do anything like write letters to the state and say, hey, we'd like to see gym class back, or I mean, anything, anything. They at won't all that we do can it. Do. That's okay. They might not do it, but well, we can at least write waste it. But I mean, I I wouldn't waste my. We can talk to the schools. We yeah. certainly can talk to the schools about um, why the whys and the what. I mean, uh, Dr. Jenna Lyons on the school board in Madison. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they talk about different activities because they used to do BMIs in school. We used to the nurses used to do the BMIs and remember when we used to do wait. Parents kind of gave us a pushback. Um, the state of Ohio still requires some version of physical education. Mm -hmm. Even if it's once a semester or yeah. twice yeah. a week, or but something. you know, is it a, is it enough? Is it you know, who knows? But sounds like not. I think, and I think ultimately, it, it again, as oftentimes is the problem, it comes back to the home life. Of what are the parents doing? Are the parents up and moving? Are the parents getting them off those electronics and getting them outside? And is he doing it with them? And 
Um, but I think the school, the, the biggest thing with the school is not whether that gets them enough. It's just introducing them into something that they may not get exposed to at home or right. like, you know, laying on the couch, playing on the computer. But um, so they may find something that they enjoy and then continue with or you know, it, it opening them up to different things that their parents may not be doing. Yeah. Especially for the older children where they have more autonomy. And they can make those choices for themselves. The younger sure. kids might even be told to go run in place or whatever it might be. Yeah. That's a good conversation. Walk down to the vape store. Yeah, that's only about 100 yards. No matter where you live, it's only 100 yards from back. Is there any more? Oh, I actually also wanted to just mention the uh, strength training. Uh, so important for all of us, but especially um, women. Mm -hmm. uh, with our bones, mm -hmm. um, especially into as we age, so I just wanted to mention that as well. Yeah. Strength, strength training for women. You don't bulk up, you just get strong, that's all, and get better. So, okay. Any other discussion before we move on? Thank you, Dr. Genoway. All right, next item is new business in our travel authorization. Do we have any? None. We don't. No one's winning well. Okay. Uh, next item reports. Health Commissioner, please. Okay, I'm going to. Um, just merge into what Dr. Genuine just reported. So, um, always bringing us back. Community health assessment is finished, and then we start moving into the community health improvement plan. So, how do we combat, address the, the three things that were um, identified? And it's throughout the state of Ohio, and that's always infant mortality, um, chronic diseases, mental health, right? So all three health departments are um, working together and we decided, and this is what's kind of really exciting, why don't we focus on increasing activity? Mm -hmm. If we increase activity, promote walking, walk walkable communities, biking, uh, rollerblading, all the different things, getting outside will help with, just like you reported, mental illness, it helps with obesity, it helps with heart disease, it helps with cancers. So why don't we just really focus on the chronic disease piece and it should take care of half of the things that we, more than half, maybe all of the things that we need to address. So talking with Butler County Cares, it's a meeting that we've met with uh, all three health commissioners and the county commissioner, Cindy Carpenter, and uh, Chamber and Mental Health uh, Director, we're all on this call, right? And Travel Ohio, and we said, why don't we start pushing out all of the activity that's going on in Butler County as far as activities and kind of promoting, 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 getting out. And so I think, we're going to um, have a red carpet, I think this is in November, November 14th, more to come because it's to be announced where it's going to be held, but the chamber said why not all three health departments come together and report out on our community health assessment and what's happened and push how we're going to um, increase activity all throughout Butler County. So. Um, more to come when we do that report. I will send out the invite to you. It's called a red carpet event. It's on a Thursday, it's a luncheon. But he said he thinks we could make a big splash about how Butler County is gonna become a more active county, physical activity. And um, we're, pretty, we're pretty excited about that because it's easier to try to, instead of decrease you know the cancer or decrease you know mental health and all of that if we just really get outside your presentation just said it it really self-improves itself mm -hmm. but you have to be intentional so we're thinking about giving away bikes start having encouragement on bike paths having more uh, promoting more walking uh, groups um, walk with the doc is getting ready to start in our community and so we will start promoting walking with the doc and everybody having their walking groups. I think uh, Warren County at um, Armco Park, they have a 5K every Saturday where you just come like a walk run and people get together and, and they just start walking and running on those days where they just walk through the park. But just starting to have these walking groups that you can just join to walk. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the community center has a line dancing mm -hmm. on Thursday night that is packed. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to probably move upstairs to the gym or find another place. Mm -hmm. Or maybe line dance in the parking lot. I don't know. But there's a lot maybe of people the there. Outside? Yeah, nice outside with mm -hmm. the nice weather. Yeah. And you just do the best you can. It's funny. You kind of crash into each other. They said the teacher says, the other left. <laughs> move to your left. The other left. And so everybody's having fun. Again, they're getting out and having um, uh, relationships and, and, and just uh, laughing and, and kidding around. But I think that is going to be the easiest part because it's free, right? All of that is free to do. So um, more to come with that. So it just goes right in what we were saying. I'm going to steal your PowerPoint when we talk about <laughs> that because it's just easier. So we'll just promote, 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 get out, get out, get out, right around. Just walk around the block with your kids how many times. And, we, and sometimes giving people prescriptions like that, you mm -hmm. know, like just once a day take your kids for a walk around the block. Because if you say exercise, mm -hmm. it seems like you got to put your, you know, your bike shorts on and all <laughs> that kind of stuff. Just go outside and enjoy the day. So. We'll start just really pushing, pushing, pushing that. Can I say a couple things? Yes, sure. about that. Mm -hmm. um, first, I'd like to say I like I really like the billboards around mm -hmm. town for about walk and talk, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. get out if you're feeling down right. from Middletown Connect. Yep. Those yep. those are wonderful, mm -hmm. and it's kind of a nice reminder. Mm -hmm. But also um, with the newsletter, mm -hmm. the, have you heard of the newsletter that we're going to have in Middletown? Um, quarter the uh, council approved it. Um, it's going to be a quarterly newsletter, eight pages, cl color, glossy, and it's going to be all Middletown news, all Middletown focused. So I'm wondering, maybe you could speak with um, uh, Clayton. Yeah, Clayton Hassel, mm -hmm. our communication manager, and see if there might be a part of the newsletter that's always centered on activity mm -hmm. and getting out in Middletown mm -hmm. and the, what you just spoke about. Yeah. As yeah. a possibility, he might. No, I think he's given us a, a health corner. Oh, fantastic. So we can just say, this is Mental Health Month. Uh, did you know that walking outside in the sun? Yeah, yeah we can do something things like, that. like that. So yeah. All right. That, that, that goes to 18,000 households, mailed physically. It's also going to be digital um, and online, so you can do it that way. You can opt out of the physical one if you want to, save some paper. But it will be going to 18,000 households and also in cafes. Right. So that was another thing. Cool. Cool, cool. Thanks. Um, the conference, the... What was it? Spring conference went really well. Uh, our presentation Wednesday morning, Carla witnessed it. I think she also videotaped it, whatever. But we came in with Ghostbusters with little <laughs> goggles on, and it was. It was um, and then we talked about uh, how Middletown Connect began, began, begun, mm -hmm. and um, everybody was um, pretty excited about it, asking questions, and it was about the grassroots. Also, we um, were invited back to interact for health, 100000 again, round of money, 100000 per year. So mm -hmm. we're getting that off. So this grant has really kicked up and, and, and really have gotten a lot of traction. So we're going to continue doing it. They're going to, <coughs> when I say they're, because we, we were part of Safety Council and the City of Middletown Health Department, uh, actually, we were the one that wrote the grant and received the grant, but we keep getting money to keep funding it further. They're going to come back and do an update presentation to the board, and you'll hear because we're getting the other information with the Amanda location. Mm -hmm. And so that Amanda location, as the mayor knows, has spun off into um, other activities. We're meeting with the city to talk about what we could do in the Amanda area and looking at a bigger picture. What we are hoping two other grants on the horizon that we may receive we may go after and receive one is the nature grant mm -hmm. mayor is aware of this that grant is a something like a six hundred thousand a year grant four years, four years. Four years. Uh, year. yeah and it's nationwide i think they they only 18 I believe. 18 only 18 people across the nation gets this grant that's one that would be What's really exciting it would be every it's for everything and making your healthy your community healthier. So you can do a lot of things. What we could do is really leverage some of the money with the activity the city's already doing. And I'm making this up right here. But a good a good example would would be what if a park needed five benches and overhang and we only the city can only afford three. Then this grant could supplement two more benches to make that park whole as far as what the communities need. 
or it could be a tree program, or it could be it could be anything. But it's just what your community cleanup. Mm -hmm. the, the city may not be able to do cleanups twice a year, only twice a year. But could we do many cleanups every month in different communities? So it it just helps um, it just helps communities be better. Now you have to write it in there. We could do mental health. We could teach classes. We could um, encourage bikes. We could maybe get those bike stands where you take a bike and you bike and then you can put it back on another stand. You can do things like that. It's big projects that you could do with it. Then there's another grant that has is really in its infancy. So I'm not going to go into detail, but that one could be in the millions. And again, it helps with infrastructure and it helps with communities as a whole. So I got excited and the mayor is excited that we may be able to have an opportunity to make a bigger splash and kind of get stuff done instead of it taking five, 10 years, we can maybe get it done where we can start seeing the difference. And I was telling most people here, I was in Loveland Sunday and it was just a beautiful um, city, a little city. It was, it was a lot of people out. It was kids on bicycles on, and on roller skates and everywhere through the neighborhoods. And of course we were downtown, look like those bike paths in and out mm -hmm. and so you had a regular parking place right but then you walked all around town so they mm -hmm. had a little um, public parking area uh, it was a whole lot of bicycles bicyclists out so I think this weekend was um, the bicycle event because I think Oxford had one Oxford to Hamilton so um, but you can encourage it and man it was just bustling it was just really cool so if you can get kids outside and the families outside and, and it was a great day that's what I would love to see in Middletown. And the shops, you guys, were not all full, but it was just so many people that, you know I mean? I was some storefronts that were empty. So you can see that they were on the uh, resurging, I guess. City Hall was right there across the street from where we were eating and stuff. So it was, it was kind of cute. And that train station kind of comes right through the town and they didn't try to hide it and cover it up. It was like ugly railroad tracks going all the <laughs> way through. But it was like, you know, well paved. Dogs out everywhere walking and stuff. So anyway, that uh, we would hope to be able to see that and maybe quicker. You know, sometimes it takes a while for things to change. Maybe we can do that quicker. I just want to add one more thing. The, mm -hmm. the HO grant is yes. due tomorrow. Um, that's when it's due. Mm -hmm. And it's already been Mm -hmm. Pretty much written. Yeah, so we'll hear soon, hopefully, or yeah. a couple months. Good thing is, if you have a good grant writer, your demographics and your data doesn't change a whole lot. So you can use that when you write a good one. You can kind of critique it the way you need to. And Rhonda uh, Ramsey is really good. So that was it. We were at uh, um, Suncoast last night. Mayor attended. It was their air quality presentation. So Suncoast is. It's called Suncoat Cap Community Advisory Panel. We've been a part of it for about 14 years, and um, we meet now quarterly, and we always have in April, May, we have an air quality report. And one of the things they said, you know, the PM2s, I guess, is that correct? PM2.5. Yeah. 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 It, it's supposed to, um, EPA is lowering the number. So it used to be 12, now it's 9. So air quality people said they know, they're expecting everybody to be out of compliance. We're gonna put information out to let people know that it's not like we're exceeding um, pollution, it's just that they are lowering, lowering the levels that is permitted. They said they lower it, and this was the last two different meetings. If we do a pretty good job staying in the containment at 12, that's when they kind of mm -hmm. lower it too. And there's other people that make that decision why they lower it to try to make people more efficient, more clean, more responsible. So to be continued, but um, that presentation should, we should receive it and then I'll put it in the board packet mm -hmm. whenever that comes up. That was really wonderful because it, like she said, um, the Ohio EPA and other organizations do that as we had that presentation also here, as we learned. And at 12, we have, we are all, all the numbers are below 12. So if it had still been 12, we would have been completely compliant, but because they lowered it to nine, that's why she's saying, and, and getting the word out that we're gonna see a lot of this non-compliance, that's why. It's just a bit above the nine as we figure out how to get below. And they also said that nine is quite low, so that's a good yeah, yeah. that's a good place to be. Mm -hmm. And that's across the United States, mm -hmm. just not in this area. 
And last I have is the, t uh, the city manager is having a town hall meeting on May 28th. That's the Tuesday after Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. And it's in the evening. I do believe it's at 6, 530. 530. Mm -hmm. And it is in response to gun violence, I do believe. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And so we will, if there was a, it's my understanding, Sunday morning there was a shooting. One person was killed, a 19-year-old. Yeah. And so um, we'll see what transpires from that. But more information there. I can send out all these dates if you guys want to come and, and hang out. I have a little check here, too. And evaluation, mm -hmm. if you want to talk about that when, they, when you ever get to that. But that can be at the end of the meeting with a open board discussion, but I think that was it. Um, and then just one thing about the um, the town hall. Yes, we're, uh, mm -hmm. city manager is inviting um, as many organizations, <coughs> state reps, every, anybody we can to, to come and, and speak about it, um, get, get our thoughts out there specifically about violence and the possibilities of what we can do um, to mitigate that. And that's a big conversation. So if you are coming and spreading the word, just come with ideas and we can have that discussion. Thank you. Okay, so that's that's it. All right. So next, thank you so much. Next one from our medical director. <coughs> uh, reportable illnesses for the month of April. We have twenty-four chlamydia, eight gonorrhea, two CPO carbapenemase producing organisms, three hepatitis B, eight hepatitis C, one HIV, and one syphilis. <laughs> Director of Nursing. I have a report. Chandra is um, at a meeting. Uh, on the FEP report, FEP stands for Public Health Emergency. It's that grant. Uh, the grant period for the deliverable is completed. The total amount for the contract is $24,362. And the final invoice was submitted 5-6. Also, the 2425 grant is forthcoming, possibly next month. The estimated amount for that is $23,837.70. Uh, communicable disease, COVID-19 is continuing to be uh, down. So we're not seeing a whole lot. Uh, is that pretty much going? I always check with the hospitals, see what they're seeing out there. Free test kits are still available. Um, it is still out there. The only reason why you would want to test, remember, is if you are contagious and you can't stay away from people, you, if you know that you are positive, you can stay away from vulnerable populations. So it's another good reason to do that. Um, community outreach. Chandra attended um, a health fair. We were invited to PTC Alliance. It's a metal medic. Uh, company in Middletown and they had a health and safety fair and we were there and we gave out smoking cessation material and just health department stuff, information, pocket aid guides, harmful balloon, algae balloon stuff, heat stress education and it was about 60 or 70 employees in attendance and uh, she said an additional 20 kids were left with the organizers to provide to the evening shift who couldn't attend. But we, when we're invited, we still try to get out, put our tent out, and show that the city of Middletown has a health department. Often, they think it's all Butler County, and we have a city health department, so we were out with that. So that's Chandra's report. Thank you. And our environmental health director. <laughs> Um, we've received in April uh, seven sets of plans to review. Um, three of those were mobiles. We are seeing an increase in our mobiles um, within the city. Um, last year, I think we had about 15. Um, this year, uh, we've licensed 18, and we're working on four to look at. So that's a total of 22. Last year was 15. Mm -hmm. um, Another increase is in body art facilities. Last year we had nine. This year we have 13 body art facilities. So um, we've approved three sets of plans in April, and one of those being Starbucks. So I think everybody in my team, team has seen the ground breaking out there. So um, and mobiles and one RFE. We have and we have um, all our pools are licensed. Well, they paid for their, their they, we've licensed them, we have to do schedule 
section. We have 28, 29 pools and 28 have um, applied for renewal. Um, one, we had a change of ownership, so we we're still waiting to see if they're going to renew their license. And we have one bar that had a change of ownership, which is on Central 101 Sports Bar. Um, we've inspected all our all of our school buildings. We have to inspect our school buildings twice a year, once in the fall, once in the spring. We have 21 schools, so we all we inspected all of those in the spring. So we're done with those. Um, in the packet, I included an update for the Tobacco 21. Um, I know we had decided to refund the money for them, but then we decided, after several cities had decided to sue the legislature, of course we decided to kind of pause refunding the money and wait to see what happens with the lawsuit. So, so you guys remember they paid, mm -hmm. and we were going to refund the money. They didn't really know that unless they watched our board meeting <laughs> and when we were finding out from the finance how to do that go through that process all the other stuff was happening and so we said instead of giving them the money back and then saying okay now here's another bill we would just hold on to it until we find out so we just have that in our like that, that caveat in our coffers but that license quote unquote they have received it and it means that we could at any point pick up and started inspecting them and going on and so it, they kind of paid for the right to sell tobacco responsibly if you will so some people are keeping them because they're doing the whole program if we just keep um, educating then the um, powers to be said we could keep the money we were just trying to be good stewards so we'll let you know what where we fall but we thought it'd be too much paperwork and too much confusion to say here's your money now give me money again back and forth so, so there, there's a scheduled hearing on May 17th but hopefully we'll find out how to proceed um, with that and I think that's it um, Carla how many plans have we had recently do you think approximately because I know we are on an uptick. I just wanted to say that to say this. Yeah. Carla is the only licensed um, health, environmental health specialist, right? We have two sanitarians in training or registered environmentalist specialists in training, right? They haven't ha taken their test to be a RS, so they're in training. And that means that they're in training by Carla, right? And so when we have all these increased plans, all these increased... Um, mobiles, all these increased body arts, and when we have the pools and whatever, she is actually out there with them making sure they do the right procedures, etc. Olivia will help with a lot of things that she can do to help with that. The hard part about this is not only is it hard on Carla, but the hard part is we can't really be involved with the whole functioning of stuff whether it's city activity, whether it's um, health fairs or whatever, because we're working. So sometimes when they say, send a staff person to, send a staff person to, we don't have any extra staff people to send to those things. We will be able to, but I think right now they were doing a retention committee for the city. Love to send a health department person so they can see how the city could be, you know, new people, but our new people are actively being trained. And it's kind of hard to send them out. So it's that balancing act of getting them some education while they're getting education, the real education to do their job. So more to, more to come. But often people want us to do a lot of things that we really, we just have the staff. You know, we don't have the staff to kind of do it. But we are um, actually, um, we definitely have the desire to do so. So to be continued. But Carla, I think she's doing a great job. And... Uh, I think Sarah's um, doing excellent because she was the the newest of the um, what do you call it of the sanitarians and so. Right. Yep. Um, no, it's that. just that uh, with also going out with them and like I said, we actually came to work Saturday to go out with with our four facility trying to get a facility open. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes when you have you have to they have to build up their confidence when you're um, dealing with um, people who want to open you tell them they can't until they can get all their information in to us and um and just enforcement i had to go out with sarah uh, uh yes what was it monday on another facility uh for 
enforcement. Um, so it's just double checking and going out with them as well. It's not as, it's just in a lot of things that it entails with that. So, but it's fun. <laughs> it's fun it's and fun. I enjoy it. So, but I think I think Sarah is doing a good job and Brandon's does doing a good job as, as well. And let me give you a good example. Latino Health Heritage oh. Festival will take all three of them and Stephanie that is fluent by So it'll be four employees of our eight. Right? I'm counting Paul when I say eight. I mean, Dr. Genoline. So it'll yeah, be it's all been out great. There. So that would be, that's going to be really fun, but there'll be a lot of, um, what do you call it, vendors? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there'll be a, a lot of uh, Spanish speaking. Yeah, so yeah. Stephanie, I hang out all day with them too. Yeah, Stephanie's been really great. She's gone out with us to a um, couple of facilities to mm -hmm. translate. Um, we mm -hmm. use we try to use Google Translate. Sometimes that gets <laughs> difficult, but it's nice having her to, to relay mm -hmm. uh, information mm -hmm. back and forth. That's been a big help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So I took someone down the other day just because they did not speak, and mm -hmm. so it's like I could help them. Like that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. When is this mm -hmm. um, Latino uh, festival? The festival week. It's in the fall. I know. Yes. Oh, okay. So September. The same as. 28th, I think it is. I think okay. it's September 28th. Mark calendar. Oh, you try to pull those things out of my brain. It's definitely the 28th. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think. Wonderful. Yep. It's the 28th. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good to hear more about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Uh, anything else or any discussion for this? No? Okay, so the next item is our board member open discussion. So one of the things, I'll just start with the evaluation. Um, uh, the members of our personnel committee uh, Dr. Zollett, Ruth Lolly, Jeff Bunnell, and Emily Miller. Um, maybe we could just meet for whoever's here. <laughs> just meet for a couple minutes after um, this meeting adjourns, just to kind of a quick talk. But before that, this is the first time I'm doing that. Um, so just curious, like how it has been done in the past. I've only done one. <laughs> <laughs> You're, You're the pro. <laughs> Arguably. Um, so I'm thinking we can have it. Has anybody else done it before? Okay, mm -hmm. so we can discuss like the, yeah. the te like how the, that goes, the protocol. Um, I know that uh, it's hopefully complete by the end of June, but we'll try our mm -hmm. best, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully that happens. Mm -hmm. All That's right, good. Mm -hmm. excellent. And any other discussion, open discussion, at this point? Anything anybody wanted to say? Okay, hearing none, we will move forward to adjournment. So we adjourn this meeting of the Board of Health at 8.22 a.m. The next Board of Health meeting is scheduled for June 11th, 2024 at 7.30 a.m. here in 2C.